down to the dent. There we go. Hey guys, it's Travis from Crew Gear coming back at you once again. Haven't said that in a while. So I'm putting together Congroy's As It Looks Today or Becker Clone Glove. Mike, thanks for the uh, yay usage of name ship. Kind sir. And I thought I'd uh, shoot a bit of progress over the course of a few days as I assemble it. And I'm working on the backplate at the moment. And uh, I've covered enough backplate stuff to choke a horse. So if you're interested, go and look at my posts and look at my back videos on why backplates are different and why I have four of them on my wall. And uh, let's take a look at what we're doing for Congor on the table. All right, so over here by my test part one pipe color scheme that I always have kicking around just to remind me of what I want, I've gone ahead and disassembled the Becker clone. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because, and, and I promised full transparency, this is my original Becker clone backplate. And this is before I did the, DS, the uh, DESA 2.0. So it was very, very close, but wasn't quite right. And I upgraded it, and I was meaning to... Uh, at the time, I had started Congroy's glove. This is actually the back plate that I did for that. And it turned out so perfect, and I had kept the template. I didn't want to build another build copy, and I knew I was going to be starting to work in pipe rather than sheet metal, so I kept it on hand. And I've made Congroy a brand new back plate from the final 2.0 Ultimate Edition. I wasn't going to do an Ultimate Edition Becker clone, but I'm doing one for him. So this is, you know, it looks like all my gloves are matching up to the Ultimate Edition from the 2.0 final temps that I'll ever do. So, Becker clone is disassembled. There's the back plate. And here's the new back plate. Here's the Becker clone stalls. And here are Congroy's new stalls being shaped from the Type M copper pipe. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a test and uh, see how it holds up against the mother back plate, which is pretty much spot on. Um, and there are a couple really interesting differences between, you know, these two back plates. The wrinkle over here on the left being one. If I were to pull over my, uh, if I were to pull my, let's say, my gear shift hero plate and take a look at the side, this is really interesting. And this is visible in the periodicals, and I know I said I wouldn't get back into back plates, but... <laughs> um, you can see how this works. There's a tuck over on the side of this, right here. It's got this little indentation right here under my pinky, uh, where that wrinkle actually is on how the glove looks today. So these are some of those little subtle differences that I love pointing out that I just go completely anal over. And you can see this, I mentioned it in my last uh, video of the periodicals at the time. And uh, you know, it's just it's really, really different from the shaping of how it looks today with just that little wrinkle. So let's take a look over here to Congroy's new back plate. And holds up pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and give it a mobility test right now. And it's got the wrinkle over here that we were just talking about. And uh, it's two scale. We're going to pop it over onto the Becker clone stalls and give it a quick swipe finger by finger and uh, finish just assembling Congroy's other stalls and uh, attach the tips. We'll start the weathering process and uh, get rolling. All right, so we have attached the new back plate to the Becker clone stalls, and uh, let's see how we did here. You know the uh, the telltale of whether you've done this right is. Uh, to make sure, the right hand, to make sure that uh, the bottom of the uh, stalls all match up and align properly uh, when compared to the mother glove. And, uh, that's up on the, uh, the kick up. When you uh, kind of kick it up to the left, they all have to kind of align properly. Focus. Yeah, there we go. Bam. And uh, getting all these little telltale side pinches done properly. Uh, getting the um, getting the, uh, the top indents underneath all these stalls proper, and uh, making sure the 
the bends and all that stuff is, is accurate. I know that Mike, I know, I think Mike, uh, for the actual glove, I haven't watched the documentary in quite a long time. I'm pretty sure he's got a medium leather underneath it. Uh, as most of you guys who know gloves know, the original glove, while the armature was quite small, the leather itself from part one and two wasn't that large, very hangy. So uh, this glove, is it's apt to look a little bit uh, on the large side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably give Congroy one of my medium Wells Lamonts. I have a few in here they are vintage, and I think it's going to look a little better underneath it. So uh, in lieu of that, uh, I put it on top of a large glove, and we'll see how it matches up. And I could be wrong, because it really does seem to match up to the large when compared to, uh, to this. Um, but... Uh, you know, there it is. There's uh, Congroy's back plate. Pretty sweet. And let's see how it looks on the hand. So again, all right. So again, you guys remember, I can't physically wear the uh, scale armature completely. I always kind of fudge it because it is small in my hand. Um, I can't give it a, you know, I can't give it a firm grip, uh, and I can't get my hand totally into it uh, um, with any authentic, um, I mean, I make it look authentic because I know how to wear the hardware and, and, it, and it's built right, but when it comes to the Becker clone, which is not gripped down to the glove, other than the one rubber band I've got, uh, it's apt to look a little weird, so bear that in mind uh, as I give it a hmm, test peak on the back plate. So there's his back plate. Looks pretty good. Very happy. Everything seems to match up. Pretty nicely as it should. And uh, there you go. Alright. Let's get to the stalls and uh, put this bad boy to bed.